Hi everyone, so understanding the concept of isoelectronic series and the size of ions that I discussed in the first video as well as in the previous topic in topic 7 when I talk about periodic trends is useful because we can use the concepts of the size of ions to um, allow us to calculate the strength of an ionic bond and this is really the importance of this topic uh, right here is we want to know when two ions come together and they form uh, uh, something we call the ionic bond which is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions how strong is that bond in other words how much energy does it take to break that bond right and by making certain calculations and certain measurements we're able to uh, get at how strong this the value of this ionic interaction is and then of course later on we'll talk about also the strength of a covalent bond and then using a uh, comparison we can decide that what's a, you know which one is a stronger type of bonding is it an ionic bond or is it a covalent bond okay and understanding those helps us to understand again the kind of reactions that w uh, each type of compounds can undergo so first of all we're going to just talk about in general what an ionic uh, solid or ionic compound is an ionic solid of course is a three-dimensional crystal consisting of a specific structural pattern and that structural pattern is what we refer to as a lattice pattern of cations and anions. So I'm going to jump to the next slide here to illustrate what I mean by that. If you were to take a crystal, for example, of sodium chloride, uh, and you can easily make this, you can, uh, for example, have a saturated solution, meaning that you've, you've completely uh, dissolved as much sodium chloride as possible, filter out the solid at that point, or you can heat it up so that everything dissolves. Um, and then you just let that uh, hot solution of sodium chloride slowly cool down to room temperature in your um, you know in your uh, uh, just on the countertop of your kitchen for example and uh, in, in a matter of days you will see these crystals show up uh, and they you know look like very nice blocky crystals that you can actually pick up now if you were to take these crystals and you put it up put put these crystals in front of an x-ray you shine an x-ray through it you'll get a you'll be able to get a diffraction pattern of this crystal remember a diffraction pattern is some concept that I discussed in the previous topic when I talk about uh, properties of light um, when we discuss quantum mechanics so getting the diffraction pattern of the sodium chloride crystal is useful because from the diffraction pattern we can uh, then figure out what the structure of the sodium chloride crystal is in terms of the atomic structure and it turns out that this has been done you know by people back in the early 20th century and they were able to de determine that the structure of a sodium chloride crystal looks something like this where there's basically a repeating pattern of uh, sodium ion and then chloride ion and then sodium ion chloride ion and sodium ion chloride ion and so on and this is what we refer to as a lattice pattern lattice here is a word that refers to uh, a, you know a particular repeating pattern okay so the word lattice is usually used in, in other types of uh, occupation like designing cloth for example designing carpet um, tapestry wallpapers and so on but basically as you can see here you know it refers to the idea that the, the the pattern is being repeated again and again in this case in two dimension now in the case of a, an actual crystal of a molecule it would be in three dimension because of course you repeat it in this two dimension here but you also go back and forth here as you can see in this particular crystal so this whole thing here is what we refer to as the lattice of that uh, particular molecule and so the uh, the, the crystal itself is often referred to as the lattice and as a result the ionic interaction is the, really the interaction between this anion right here and this cation right here right so you, what you want to know is well how strong is this bond right here how strong is this interaction uh, between these two uh, between this cation and anion and because the pattern itself is referred to as a lattice the ionic bond itself the energy that quantifies the strength of an ionic bond, you know, in one mole of an ionic bond, is uh, usually called lattice energy. And again, so that's just basically it, it means the same as the strength of an ionic bond. This term, lattice energy. So it's the energy that you get. So the definition itself is the energy that you get when cations and anions combine to form one mole of an ionic compound. So for example, I can write it this way. I have sodium and these are all in the in you know the the uh, reactants are all in the gas state this is important to to note and then the product is in the solid state 
So the example of this would be sodium uh, plus cation in the gas state plus chloride ion in the gas state combining together to form sodium chloride in the solid state. Now, when these two combine together, they make this strong interaction, this electrostatic interaction. Now, you remember from chapter 7 when we talk, you know, sort of, you know, it's the same. Electrostatic interaction is always about positive-negative interaction. So, in chapter 7, we talk about interaction between the electron and the nucleus, right? The closer they are together, the stronger that attraction would be. So, the same thing right here. If these two are interacting, then when they form this, this compound here is going to be more stable or lower in energy compared to the uh, individual ions, okay? So as a result, if this energy, the product energy, is lower than the reactant energy, then the lattice energy, which is the energy that uh, represents this process, should be less than zero, right? Because the compound is always more stable than the, than the uh, separate ions. So the lattice energy is always negative in this case. I just want to point out here, some textbooks actually define the lattice energy ex as exactly the opposite process, which is the breaking down of an ionic compound. So then the value of the lattice energy would be the same, but then it will be a positive value. But in this uh, class, we're going to define this as, the, um, as this process right here, which is the combining of two uh, oppositely charged ions to form an ionic compound. And as a result, the process here is always exothermic because the compound is always going to be more stable compared to the separated ions. Now there are two ways you can actually calculate lattice energy because remember that lattice energy is important because to you know if we know lattice energy we're able to then determine how strong an ionic bond is. There's a couple of methods. One is using uh, Coulomb's law, and Coulomb's law is just as you'll see in the next slide, is basically just an equation that represents the strength of uh, electrostatic uh, attraction between two point charges. So we can use that to model the uh, strength of an ionic bond in a crystalline environment. We can also use a more experimental method of measuring lattice energy and this would require you to basically do a Hess's law type of approach. Uh, this is often called either a Hess's law or thermodynamic cycle as we talked about in, in topic six. Um, and basically what you need to do is you're going to combine a series of reactions that we can measure it energy of. Okay, so we're able to measure the energy of each of these reactions. When you combine them together, and the energy or the enthalpy that we measure for each of these reaction, if you combine them in such a way, you're able then to, to obtain or to calculate the value of the lattice energy for the ionic compound of interest. This particular method is known as the born harbor cycle. And there's a specific set of reactions that are part of the born harbor cycle, which I'll discuss in the next uh, video. So for the rest of the video, I just want to talk a little bit about the Coulomb's method of calculating lattice energy. And Coulomb's equation is shown right here. And for those of you who have taken physics, talk, uh, taken electro uh, electricity and magnetism, you've seen some an equation that looks very similar to this before, probably on electrostatic force. And this is the energy form of Coulomb's equation. And basically, the potential energy of you know, electrostatic attraction or repulsion, but we're in primarily interested in attraction in this case, right? The potential energy of uh, two point charges that are attracted to each other because they have opposite charges is given by this equation, which is K times Q1, Q2 over R. Now I put a parenthesis in this component right here because this is the part that we're gonna be interested in. The K is a proportionality constant and that depends on the environment of the ion. So if it's, you know, if it's, if it's surrounded by water molecules, it's going to have a certain value of K. If it's surrounded by, let's say, gas, it's going to have a different value of K and so on. Uh, but we're really not going to necessarily calculate the energy of the attraction, but what we're going to do is more compare relative strength of interaction or relative lattice energy. So what we're going to be interested in is this Q1, Q2, and R. Now, what's Q1, Q2, and what's R? Well, Q1, Q2 are charges on the cation and anion. So if, I, if I'm talking about, you know, sodium chloride, then the Q1 will be plus 1 for sodium, and then the Q2 would be minus 1 for chloride, okay? And if I'm talking about magnesium chloride, for example, then the Q1 will be plus 2 because magnesium is a plus 2 charge. The Q2 then will still be negative 1 because chloride uh, is a negative 1 ion, okay? What about R? R is the 
length of the ionic bond. And this is basically, if you do it very roughly, it's just this, the, you know, if you go back to that slide about the um, isoelectronic series, if I have sodium and chloride here, the, re the, the ionic bond length is basically the radius of the sodium ion plus the radius of the chloride ion added together, right? If I have these two guys next to each other, then this radius plus that radius should be the radius of the ionic bond length, okay? Uh, it should be the distance, I'm sorry, of the ionic bond length. Uh, so, you know, that's that's sort of like the uh, the very simplistic uh, way of looking at the, what that R quantity represents. Now, given these two quantities, you can then compare, you know, relative strength of interaction between different types of ionic compounds. So, for example, in the next slide, I mean, I should say in the next video, you know, I'll give you some examples on how to compare um, the strength of lattice energy between, say, sodium chloride uh, compared to magnesium sulfide and calcium chloride compared to magnesium fluoride, okay? And you can basically use the equation here and primarily just focusing on this part of it to think about, well, what matters in each one of them? You know, what is the Q1, what is the Q2 for each of these ionic compounds? And what is the R? What's the distance between the NaCl versus the Mg and the S? And you can do that even though not knowing actual bond, you know, length. You can use the isoelectronic series and the trend that comes along with the isoelectronic series to make prediction on which of these two would, would have a higher, more exothermic lattice energy. Okay? And the next video will show you examples of both of these, how to work both of these out.